Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. You know the music start is like a news, uh, you know like a start of a news right? And actually we are sharing the good news with people. It's very exciting to share with people what is true and what is false. You know many people they say and they come, those who refuse Christianity and they attack it, they say a Christian worshipping a human. Some even they say they are pagans. Uh, some they go farther and they say even that a human does not exist, like Jesus does not exist. So you as a Christian or uh, adult or youth or even very young, when you go into society you hear a lot of things which is supposedly the purpose of them to make you leave your faith. So here we are trying to clear things so people cannot fool you or fool your children. Worshipping God, and this God is a human. <clears throat> you know, when you speak to an atheist, he said to you, why your God don't show himself? When God, he show himself, he said to you, I don't like what he show us. <laughs> so, it doesn't matter what this God do, they will not be happy. So why your God don't show himself? Okay, so if God show himself, are you going to accept him? No. And how you want God to come to you? You know, human being, he think like he is sitting in a restaurant and there is a waiter or a waitress and he bring them a menu and the menu have a bunch of gods. Choose one. And based on your choice, he will deliver to you the God you like. Someone, he is a spiritual, he want to see God as wind. And there's some people worship the wind, you know. Uh, there's many religions, they have their own philosophy. Wind is God, light is God, uh, cloud is God. So God is what you want and how you decide. And there's God who he is, he is who he is. You know, pre-mindset, <clears throat> is always a problem for a human being and that goes for everything human being when he go vacation he expects something if what he is expecting there is not there he is so sad a man she marry a woman she have expectation if the expectation is not there she is so sad and for sure the divorce is coming or a horrible life same for the man. So we have expectation and the expectation is our problem. Human being, he try somehow to make and design a certain image and he try to place the image in his mind on everything he have around him. What is a perfect man? What is a perfect woman? What is a perfect God? What is a perfect drink? What is a perfect food? What it, it is just uh, a pre-designed image you have in your mind and you wanna, you are looking for it. If you are looking for a pre-designed image, trust me, you will never find it. And you will be always disappointed. When you have expectation and your expectation is high based on your imagination, well, except, expect nothing but imagination anyway. When it's come to God, if He is true and exists, who are you and who am I to tell Him how He can be? Let us make it simple. God, he came to us as a man. So what do we do? Oh God, you cannot be a man, but I am God. I can do whatever I want. No, 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 no. no. Go back and come back to us as, a, as something else. This is very shallow thinking. The second we say he's God, we accept that God he is as he pleased to be or to present himself or to show himself. When the Bible speaks about God or the Holy Spirit appear as a bird in the sky, is that an insult to God? 
is that will make a god maybe he's a chicken now you know even though it's not it was not a chicken it was a bird but it doesn't say it's a, a dove but is that really a big different i mean is it a big deal is that disappointing for you that god he came as a bird one god he spoke to moses and he saw fire in the bushes are you disappointed because you don't want that you want something else you want to design something else so human being he is a very funny creature he think he is in control of who is god is when it is the opposite so you want god to be as you wish in other way you want god to be you want to be god and he is just you you know you are his maker you want to remake him you know that like you don't like how he is but today we are going to talk about jesus who come in the flesh and how that is very important for us see always god or the image of god or the thought about god it different doesn't matter what religion we are speaking about high supreme perfect um, he do things which is nobody can do you know etc but then this god he says to us he order us as an example not to do sin the one who is telling me not to do sin he don't do sin because his nature is holy okay so because your nature is holy and my nature is not it's easier for you to say it but it's impossible for me to do it and that is not fair what about you take the form of a man and let us see if you can resist the sin you know what I mean this God in high heaven he is saying to me oh Christian Prince don't don't think about women but Christian Prince is a man he, he will think about women or don't uh, think about money but Christian Prince he needs money or don't you know uh, uh, don't do this and don't do that and uh, it, uh, talk is easier right but what about you God come as a man and show us how you can do it I mean don't you think this is impossible don't you think it's impossible for a man not to think about women don't you think it's impossible for a man not to think of his own glory to be uh, let us say rich uh, powerful uh, etc you have you are rich everything is made by you you are powerful you have all the power you are holy because simply you don't commit sin. What about you take a form like mine and let us see how you can do it. Let us say this is a challenge. Can you do what you are asking me to do if you are a human like me? Or then you will say, oh, I have an excuse. I'm a human now. I will, I will not be able to do it. So here you see how important that God, he came to us as a man. He took the flesh of a man. He took the weakness of a man. The Bible speaks about Jesus. He went to the mountains and he fasted for 40 days and he was hungry. Somebody would say, God is hungry. We were just told you, you know, he's shown you. He came as a human so he can suffer the same as the human suffer and show us how you can be human yet you can be God. Satan he come to him and he try all what he can to tempt him as a human. And he fail. You know what I mean? So now we learn from Jesus that I can be a human like you I can be tempted like you and here tempted by the way you know English is limited like you know 
uh, when you say tempted, you think like Jesus you commit sin. No, tempted is an act of tempting happening to Jesus, but Jesus never been tempted. You know, tempted is when you fail, usually, you know, like, I've been tempted, so I did this and I did that. But in the case of Jesus, you read the story. Let us open the story and show it in the screen. <clears throat> and then right away, we will, we will see that the act of Satan against God, who is a man, was... A failure if we go to Matthew chapter 4 it was a big failure so now Christ is a man Christ is a man who have a flesh of a man he have all what man have he get hungry he get tired the flesh get tired, not God. He had Satan, he have a failure. Chapter 4 Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. All right. What we learn from this? The first thing Jesus, he taught us here, that he as a man can be tempted the same as you are, even though he is God in flesh. Satan, he can try, but he can reject Satan temptation by getting the answer from what is written, which is given to you already, the holy book. You will notice that the Messiah and Satan here, we have a debate. It's a form of a debate. Satan, he said to him, do this. Jesus said to him, and you notice that Satan, if even he's, he's quoting the Bible too. You notice that? Satan, he is quoting the Bible Read with me carefully. If you are the son of God, okay, where, where, where Satan he got this? This is from the Bible. It was not written as a book at that time, but this is what Jesus said. If you are the son of God, and in the Old Testament mentioned that too, then throw yourself, for it is written. It is written. So Satan even, he can use the word of God to deceive you. Can you imagine? So Christ, he went farther in temptation. Example, not only you can be tempted by money, uh, other things, you can be tempted even by following God. 
Satan, he knew that Jesus is not one of those sinners. So he cannot tempt him by women, money, etc. He tried to say, okay, this is a person claiming to be the son of God. Let us see if he is. Throw yourself if you are the son of God. A person who is normal, you know, I mean, think in a shallow way, he would say, okay, I will show you. Jesus answered him back, he says, <laughs> an answer from the same what he is quoting. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. So if the Bible says that God will protect you, doesn't mean you tempt, you know, like you try God. Okay, I'm going to jump from the top of a mountain and see a God, he said he protect me. That's not what the Bible is saying. There's something you do to try God, and there's something happened, and God protect you. So here we see a debate, a form of a debate, but the, the purpose of this debate is the flesh and God. The flesh, if you throw himself, you will be dropped down dead. God in the flesh is answering Satan saying, well, yeah, I have a flesh, but I am not a fool. I am not a fool. You, you cannot fool me. And here Jesus is teaching us that the wisdom can come from a book you have in your hand. You see, Jesus, he did not bring something you do not know. He did not bring something it is mysterious for you. All the answer is coming from what is written. So we as, a, as people who follow God, we should always take what is written as a way to answer and to refute. Because many, they will come to us, and this is what we do actually, you know, when uh, uh, somebody from different religion, he says to you, oh, it says here this, it says there, they try to tempt you and make you feel when the fact, the answer is there too. They say to you, Jesus, where Jesus says, I'm God, worship me. It's in the front of you. It is written, you shall not tempt your Lord, your God. Satan trying to tempt Jesus. Satan, he wants you to worship him. And he promised Jesus everything he can wish for. What Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. So what Satan does to Jesus, he does with us every day. For us, we find there's no, if we find always an excuse for him. He did not use the excuse. He used the book to answer Satan. So the difference between God who is not a human, or he came to us in the flesh of a human, and God who come to us in the flesh of a human, that God in the flesh of a human proved to us that you can be human, yet you can work in yourself to be holy as God is holy. You can be human and suffer, and I will suffer like you. They will put nails in my hands. They will make fun of me. They will throw rocks at me. They will humiliate me. All this, those things can happen to you, and they happen to me. And not only that, they can kill me. You know, there's, a, there's many fiction movies where the guy in the movie, and I, I mean, he, like Rambo, the guy who shoot everybody, everybody shoot him. And then in the movie, like, finally, he got injured in the shoulder. You know, it's, it's a movie. Always in movies, you know, there is a hero, and this hero, he is the winner. Everybody died. The, the rest of the actors are just there for an act, and then they disappear one by one. The friend of the hero got shot, the son of the hero got shot, but the hero himself, he stay alive to the end. 
and he will be victorious. So if we want to say that somebody was saying Jesus' story is a fiction story, well, what kind of fiction story, the hero die? You know what I mean? The hero die. He was killed, he was humiliated. So what where is the fiction there? I mean where is where is where is the uh, uh, you know those who want to make uh, those who want to make a person a god, why they want to make him look miserable, weak, humiliated? In the cross, people making fun of him. I mean, this is not as suitable to, to even, uh, uh, if we are making a story up. If I make a story about a person who is a hero, I will make him unbeatable, nobody can humiliate him, nobody can take him down, nobody. So this is not a created story, this is something happened. But the reason for it to happen is again, that Jesus as a human, who is God as a human, he can go through way more than you went through, and yet still he can be holy. The Messiah in the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. So imagine we have God who keeps saying to us, oh, uh, Lord, how we you know they ask Jesus? How to pray, Lord? He said, pray like this. And what the prayer says, forgive to others as you forgive to us. Forgive to us, or the forgiveness, have to happen in a certain way. You cannot be forgiven by God unless you forgive others. Well, talk is cheap. Talk is easy, but look what happened with the Messiah. He said what he did. In the cross, Jesus, the human, he said, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them, Father. So, if I am as a man, and there is somebody putting nails in my feet, God knows what I will say. God knows how many filthy words maybe I would use. How many curse. How many, uh, how, in the best scenario, I will be maybe praying for God to revenge. Right? But in the case of Jesus, who is God in the flesh of a man, he have the suffering of the man, he have the blood of a man, he have the pain, and yet he have the honor of God. I mean, how hard it is. How hard it is to be God, yet they do that to you. And then what do you do? Forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. Forgive us for our trespass, as we forgive to those who trespass against us. So when Jesus become a human, or let us say God come to us as a human, he was an example to us to live as a human. It is the most deep human nobility ever you can imagine. So Christ coming as a man is, was not just for, okay, I'm going to take a uniform of a man and I will come to them and now I will show them uh, uh, how powerful I am. I'm going to walk in the water. I'm going to make the blind see. I'm going, it's like a, it's like a show. Okay, I'm going to show you how powerful. And this is not what the purpose. The purpose of God as a man is to show you that when he is weak, still he is forgiven. 
when he is discriminated, when he is humiliated, when he is killed, he is still forgiven as he asked you to be. So he was not giving us a lecturer about how to be good from high above. He lived what we live through and even way more. And yet he do what he asked us to do. So the main point I see for Christ is not to be hypocrite. Talk is cheap. Oh, God says forgive him. Oh, the talk is cheap. Okay, this guy, he killed my son. And now are you saying to me, forgive him? How I can do that? So we have a unique God. His humanity versus his God power imagine how much you resist to use your power when you are in the cross being humiliated this is a person who can destroy them by saying a word this is the person who that the heaven split when he died what can happen to those people if he get angry from them Yet he is saying, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they are doing. So if you are a person who don't believe in Christianity, and even if you think Christianity is a fiction, think about it this way. How amazing this Christianity is. This is what we need today in this filthy earth. If you go in the, in the bus, you cannot even leave your back alone, actually. They will snatch your phone from your hand. People raping women and they are posting the videos in YouTube. No shame. No humanity. A person is walking, somebody come from his back, he shoot him and he take the back in his hand because he think they have some money. A woman, she, she's dragged with her purse because a filthy person, he want to steal the back. And he drag her behind his motorcycle and she die. So I say to those who reject Jesus, even if Jesus is a fiction as you claim, you need Jesus to live good. Your police is not helping because they come after the crime. Your doctors are not helping because you they will they will take you to them when you are dying from drugs. Too late. You need the Messiah, even if you think he is a fiction for you, for he is the one who can change your society. Which one is better for you? People who believe, forgive them, Father? Or those who want to kill you? Which you prefer to be your neighbor? Which one is better for you? The one who believe love your enemy? Or the one who seek revenge and killing and rape? And he believe you are his enemy? Which one you want to be a neighbor for you? Jesus or someone else? So when we speak about the Messiah... We are not speaking just about a human who is God. We are speaking about a rescue. A rescue belief. Of a person who is a human in flesh, yet he have a rescue plan for us. All of us, regardless of our faith. People are very shallow when they try to understand Christianity. Christianity, my friend, is a rescue plan for mankind. Go look around you how, how disgusting this earth is. Companies are making drugs to save millions of people dying and then hackers, they go in and they steal the information, everything is a business, everything is about money. 
human being became a product. Jesus restored humanity in us. So when he came in the flesh, he did many things. He became a human, deeply human, as no human ever. Forgiving, loving, giving, sacrificing, the best example for a human to be. Look at the children, they are saying the F word to their parents. Why? Because we have a modern education. How modern is that? Go to the bus and see nobody standing for an old person. A youth is sitting and old woman she is standing. How wonderful our modern education. Go see people putting bars over their windows because security and fear is there. Security is gone. Fear is there. So when we speak about Jesus, and I speak to those who they are Christian and those who they are Christians, we say to you that Jesus the Christ as a man is the perfect God. For he is the only one who is like us in flesh. He feel what we feel, yet he is the best example to do what he do not what we do. Do we understand? The Bible say clearly that God, he humbled himself. He took the flesh of a man. It was for a purpose. It was not for a movie. It was for a reason, a very important reason. He humbled himself so we can humble ourselves too. How much proud we are. Have you ever heard of a God or God or somebody think he is God or claiming to be God yet he want to wash your feet? So not only he humbled himself, I mean, this God, he want to wash our feet. And when they say to him, oh Lord, we cannot let you do that. He said, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. It's a condition. It's a must. It's a requirement. Imagine there is somebody, he is king of the world, the king of kings. And then he washed the feet of those who will join the club. And he said to you, in order to join my club, you have to wash the feet of all people. Poor, white, black, Asian, doesn't matter. You have to wash your, you want to you wanna be called master, you have to be a servant. I mean, what is left is important more than Jesus, God in the flesh. For he was the best of the best as an example for a man to be. The fool, they question only how God can be a man, but they don't question how God can be a man and can be holy in the same time. They remember only the flesh. They don't want to remember, okay, he was a man, but in your book it says he made the blind see, he made the dead alive, he is right now in heaven. I mean, all those things, yet you say he's a man. So the hypocrisy is amazing. They decide he is a man when they want, and they remember his miracles when they want. But the unique about Jesus, that he's miraculous even by birth, he's miraculous in his life, his miraculous in his walking between us, for the most biggest miracle of Jesus, not only raising the death or the dead people, 
not making the blind see, not healing the lepers, not resurrecting himself from death, is to be holy, yet in the flesh of a man. So everything about Christ as a man serve one thing. Jesus restore humanity inside you human who you lost it. You become a criminal. You lost your decency. You became filthy. You become a selfish machine. You want to you grab everything for your hand. You became a rapist, you became a child molester, you became everything disgusting. Jesus restored humanity when he come as a human. And I say to you, if you have someone better than Jesus, let me know. In the year 2020, we heard about a lot of names of philosophers, and they mentioned to them. We mentioned they mentioned their names to you know to, to us. As an example, Gandhi he says uh, something about Christ. He says, "I like your Christ. I don't like the Christian," which is very f funny and silly and shallow. Suppose this is the wise man. What this guy is talking about? The British Army is the Christians. How shallow! How silly! The Christian, my friend, the disciple of Jesus, who follow Jesus, whoever he is, it doesn't matter what time, in the time of Jesus or now. Shallow people. So they throw rocks at us, showing that their wisdom is wise, but the fact their wisdom is shallow and stupid. The same wise man who was speaking about, I like Christ, your Christ, but I don't like the Christian, he did not open his mouth to stop burning women alive when the husband died. And they say to you, he defended human right. This is the wise man they have. And those who they are, the bad Christians, which is the British army, is the one who is stopping them from burning the wife when the husband die. I'm not defending anyone. I'm just saying, showing you how hypocrisy work, how shallow people work. So if those people are bad, and I'm not saying they are good. I mean, Christians is those who follow Christ. You don't follow Christ, you are no Christian. Regardless of if you are British or French or whatever. But they, there's many people, they go against Christianity, speak, and they claim to be, have to be, and people praise them for they are wise and peaceful. How come this guy did not protest against burning women alive? What about you fast from food? Not fast from food only against the British, so, People will stop burning women alive. They are doing that for thousands of years. So only your wisdom appear against the bridge, but you don't appear against burning women, separating of society. The poor die poor, the rich he live rich. And that goes for many society, not only in certain place. Many people, they say things about Christianity, but none of them is a truthful, for Christianity is a Christ, is not a Christian prince. My name is a Christian prince because I am trying my best to follow Christ, but I am not Christ. And there's no good in me, for only God is good. This is what the Bible says. So if you are a person trying to fight Christianity by throwing rocks at Christ, Using me as a rock, you are a fool. For a Christ is not me. And if I do not follow him, I don't present him then. And actually, there's no one can present him. For he's extreme holy. You want to talk about Christianity, you talk about Christ. Anyone else? Is not a fair discussion. The question is how God can become a man. That's very easy. He's God. <laughs> Why not? If he cannot become a man, then he cannot be God too. You know what I mean? If they say to you how God can become a man, say then how God can be God if he cannot be a man. That's funny. 
it's like you know saying to me okay uh, okay I'm going to claim to be God now all right uh-huh and now you are God you claim to be God and uh, okay I am asking you uh, how you look like God so I say to you I look like let us say a tree oh you tree uh, how God become a tree okay forget about tree I am like uh, the star oh a star uh, how God can be a star so what do you want what do you want exactly do you want me to design myself to fit the way you want what do you want tell me tell me what you like me to be and then I will do it for you this is how shallow a human being is they want to design God as if they are going to a restaurant seeking a dish of food and then the waiter or the waitress they bring you a, ma a menu and then you choose the God you wish to eat or to swallow God he is in control and God he chose how he come to us and we showed you now in a very simple way that when God he come to us as a human for very simple reason for we are human and we are considered his children he love us he love what he created he want to save us so God coming as a human that because of his deep love he humbled himself he accepted the flesh of a human and this was the plan from the beginning you know the flesh of a human is not an insult the Bible says God created Adam in his image in his image was created and what we do with the image and the image here is not only a picture of a man many people think that the word image is just a picture the word image my friend is a humanity the image of a human who feel who cry who share who give who feel sad who feel happy that is the image and what we did to this image we became criminals we abuse we use we have no mercy we became a disposal machine anything go in never go out we take we don't give so God he made you in his image mean you are going to be merciful humble loving giving everything good but what we did we throw the good which God he gave us and we took the evil which is not from him this is why I say how wonderful God as a human is thank you Lord for coming to us as a human now I know that I do sin and I have no excuse now I know that you can be like me yet you can fight against evil so I say to you for those who make fun of God as a man make fun of yourself for you claim you to be God in the same time and this is how silly those people are because the second you start deciding who is God who is not and you reject for a very silly reason you are saying that you are God and you are in control when the fact and you are not we saw what a virus did to human being I mean you are you are in big trouble for just a stupid tiny virus and the funny is those who make fun of God when they get sick suddenly they say God when they are healthy, jumping, hiking, dancing, drinking, God is, forget about God, man, this is boring. The second they get sick and they are dying, suddenly or they say, oh God, oh God, help me. He spent his life making fun of God. And the second he turned into a weak creature, oh, you get cancer, oh God, help me. Suddenly he wanna believe in God. All his life is cursing God, making fun of God. That how silly human being is. He is selfish, disgusting, ungrateful. 
or what he think about is himself. When the idea of Christ is, I want you to live and enjoy happiness by thinking about others. Don't think of yourself. And the reason the Messiah he is doing that, because if we think about others, others think about us. How happy is that? How nice it is. I go to a place, everybody try to make me happy. And I try to make them happy too. I mean, a win-win for everybody. If I go to a place, I try to be sure that everybody is safe. And then they will try their best to be sure that I am safe too. Peace, love, harmony, deep humanity. So my friend, Christ the man, he restored humanity for mankind. And you are trying today to fight it, to kill it. And this is why your sons are involved in drugs and they are dying. And this is why your sons are going and fighting and joining, uh, 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 you know, terrorist groups. And this is why your sons are killing each other. And this is why hate is all over. And this is why people, they fight over simple things and beat each other for stupid things. Because you lost your humanity, which Christ, he is doing his best to restore it inside you. So I say, We need the Christ, the human today, more than ever before. Christmas is coming soon. Christmas. What a name. Can we restore humanity in this Christmas? Can we start our charity inside our home? Can a woman appreciate her husband and the husband appreciate his wife? Can we be merciful and forgiving? Can a woman think about her children, the one she ignored for long, or the person who is a child who ignored his mother or her father for long? For long? Can we be Christians and think of each other? Can we be human again? Can we restore love? Can you restore Christ in your house? That is a challenge. I leave it for you. When people they speak about charity, I say charity start with yourself. Can you do charity to yourself? Do charity to yourself. You need love, my friend. And love is not by asking for it, it's by giving it. Those who give love, they enjoy it. They receive it. They have it, even if somebody did not return back, for their joy is already there. Be human. Be Christ in the flesh. Be holy as your God. That is the Bible and that is the word. I want to say thank you for being here. I hope you did like the explanation for today. I am not a person who claimed that I am the one who can teach you. I'm a person who is just sharing with you what I believe and how I think. I want you to think of for yourself. And as you know, my English is limited. I wish my language is better to explain better. Sometimes I find myself out of words. I don't know what to say. I mean, because you have a short, or let us say, little numbers of words you can use in a language it's not yours. But yet I hope that my simple English was able to make you receive the simple Christ. For he do not need philosophers. He speak through us. He speak through your heart, not through the words. He wants you an act person, not a talking person. Do what you say and say what you do. And do to others what you like people to do to you. Love your enemy, forgive those who hurt you. And then you will receive peace, and peace will receive you. The Lord, he promised us peace. 
But in order to receive peace, we have to have peace. We have to be people who believe in it. Not a bunch of angry, crazy people. Peace on earth. That is a Christ. And on Christ, he leave this earth. This earth is going to be hell. You see, I believe in hell and heaven, but I believe we are going to be in hell here before we go to a different place. This earth is going to turn into hell. And the faster we corrupt it, the faster we stay away from Christ, the faster this earth will die. Nations are getting against nations. Countries going against countries. There is a war of corporation, not a war of people. What do you see before in the movies and the fiction? It's happening. Sanctions against countries just because of a corporation. Fighting over product. Fighting over water. Fighting over gas. Fighting over everything. The human being became a power hungry as never before. He became like a snake who cannot stop filling up her belly. She swallow, she take a nap and she swallow, and she take a nap and she swallow. And the more snakes we have, the more people will be swallowed. So either you fight the snakes with us by joining Christ, or you become a victim of those snakes, or maybe a snake. And time will come, and the Lord, he will step on that snake, and he will smash her head, for she is evil. And the snake here is symbolic for evil. Don't be that one. Thank you very much for being here. This is your humble brother, Christian Prince, while with you. And forgive me if I did not explain myself very well. Maybe you can do better with your better English or better language. God bless you. And see you soon again. Take care.